Well, that pet food recall, it seems, has expanded by yes. the day. Each day we hear more and more, and now a troubling new question. And that question is, was the chemical that's behind the recall placed in the pet food intentionally? Mm. The latest now from CNN's Joe Johns. When will it end? Del Monte Pet Products announcing it is extending its recall to a variety of treats, snacks, and beef sticks for dogs. The company called it a precautionary measure. Another day in what could turn out to be the largest pet food recall in history. And the one thing everyone can agree on is that a chemical called melamine was found in wheat gluten that was used to make the food. The chemical simply isn't supposed to be there, but it appeared at levels of 6% or higher, which would be considered a very large amount if this were a random, in other words, accidental contamination. All of the companies that bought or sold the gluten deny adding melamine. But one theory FDA investigators are exploring is whether the melamine was introduced intentionally into the wheat gluten. Why would somebody do that? One answer is that this whole thing could have been about money. In other words, to make it look like the wheat gluten had higher levels of protein than it actually did and therefore could be sold for more money. That's right, more protein is considered good. So, hypothetically at least. You're trying to convince your customer that you have higher quality protein than you actually have. Dan Watts is a chemist with the New Jersey Institute of Technology. He says melamine is rich in nitrogen. Protein is rich in nitrogen. High levels of nitrogen would make wheat gluten appear to have lots of protein but the chemical wouldn't actually raise the protein levels at all. So basically, the theory FDA is investigating is that someone could have been trying to run a scam with no reason to believe any pets would get sick as a result of it. And not necessarily setting out to do anything that was going to be harmful, perhaps setting out to do something that was a commercial uh, fraud. Until now, no firm research has ever suggested that melamine could be harmful to dogs and cats and the government is still not certain whether the chemical itself has actually sickened or killed the pets, or if melamine is actually a so-called marker for some other toxic substance. The research is spotty, and there's not even a basic clearinghouse to track all the pets sickened or killed. The FDA has turned to one indicator, though. The chain of 600 Banfield pet hospitals across the U.S plugs information into a database every time an owner shows up with a sick pet. Banfield says it has seen a 30% increase in the number of cats diagnosed with acute or chronic kidney failure compared with a normal period. But the hospital group says it's difficult to extrapolate from that how many pets have been sickened or killed. The FDA says it has received more than 12,000 calls from pet owners about tainted food, but it doesn't break out how many have actually been affected? We'll never know the total number of pets that were affected by this. There's just no way. Like the FDA, Banfield says it is starting to see fewer reports, so the worst for pet owners might be over. But the FDA is just beginning to get to the bottom of why pets all over the country got sick or died from eating contaminated food. Joe John, CNN, Washington. All right, whether it's a scam or not, we do want to get some expert advice for pet owners. And for that, we turn now to New York and Dr. Diane Levitan, a veterinarian. Uh, doctor, the first thing I want to ask you is it seems like every day there are more types of food added to this recall list. And that being the case, should pet owners out there be worried about any food because there could be the potential case that that would be added to list just as well as the other ones have? Of course, everybody's a little concerned, and, and they should be. But I think if everybody just really checks their labels for wheat gluten products, I think we don't have to really be concerned if it's not in there. And I think we also have to remember that a very small number of, of pet foods have been affected overall. And so check the websites, you know, check CNN's website, ask your veterinarian, and keep on top of what's being reported. But I think overall we're relatively safe, and I do see that a big decline in the number of cases right now as well. Well, we will talk about those cases in just a second, but I do want to remind our viewers that, as you mentioned, we have a complete list at CNN.com, and at the bottom of the screen, uh, you're going to see the exact names of those different types of pet food on that recall list, and we'll be showing that throughout the morning. But, Doctor, back to these specific cases. Have you treated any of those cases, and what are you seeing? We have treated several cases in our center on Long Island, and I'm, I know of a lot of colleagues who also have treated suspected cases. 
The one thing I want everyone to really understand, though, is that the symptoms that we see and, the, uh, and kidney failure is not an uncommon thing and that we can't always attribute it to the food. So we need to look at those cautiously. Now, and we talk about melamine, this being the culprit, but I've spoken with uh, other veterinarians who say that's really not what they would view as what's causing these animals to get sick. You're right. I don't think we really know exactly what the cause is. We do know that they have found melamine. We do know the common denominator is the wheat gluten, but we don't know specifically what the actual toxin is because historically we don't know of melamine to cause these things that they have been causing, the kidney failure. All right, and so when uh, these pet owners are watching all of this play out and it continues just to unravel day by day, let me ask you this. What kind of symptoms do they need to be looking for aside from uh, kidney failure? Well, kidney failure has symptoms of vomiting, lack of appetite, increased thirst, and urination. Again, those are symptoms of lots of other problems, but the second you're concerned, you've got to see your family veterinarian. They'll help you square that away right away with a simple blood test. Do you think the FDA is doing enough? We're hearing that uh, the Senate is going to actually hold hearings uh, into this investigation. Should the FDA have done more, or did it step in just in time? I think the FDA did the very best they could with what they were given. There's very little information to disseminate, but everybody wants some information. So as to how quickly they responded, I'm not positive I could tell you that it wasn't quickly enough, but the news has done a great job. Veterinarians have done a great job about telling people what's out there. The FDA's website is all inclusive, and I think they're doing the very best with what they can right now. And for the pet owner at home who is watching and is seeing this long list, it's about, what, 1% of the dog food and pet cat food out there, but yet there's still a lot still on the market that supposedly is safe. So what should people do? Should they just go with what's not on the list or should they be very cautious and go ahead and boil their own food, make their own food, maybe go organic? You know, a lot of people want to go out and make their own food. And for the short term, that may not be a very bad idea. But long term, it could really lead to malnutrition and improper nutrition for their pets. So as soon as this all gets squared away, hopefully in the next few weeks, we'll all feel very confident again about pet foods. But I still think there are lots of very safe pet foods out there. Ask your veterinarian. They'll give you the best advice of what they would recommend for you to use. Dr. Diane Levitan, a veterinarian herself, we appreciate your time today. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, we have posted the entire pet food recall list on our website. You can check it out, cnn.com slash pet food recall. And again, do want to remind you that check the ticker running at the bottom of your screen. We are listing all of the affected brands.